It's moving time. So, as you can see, I'm gonna be moving out, but before I do that, I wanted to cover a topic that I get asked a lot, and that is what to look for when purchasing latex clothing. So, let's get to it. First off, let's talk about latex thickness. Now, here's a nice little chart that you can see about the different types of latex thicknesses and how I classify them. You can see light gear. I sort of classify light gear as your cosplay type stuff. This is it's very easy to put on, it's very flexible, but it's not gonna hold up to a lot of abuse. If you wanna do bondage type scenes, you definitely don't wanna use light gear because that'll rip right away. Now, if you wanna actually play in your gear, definitely get more normal thicknesses, uh, 0.4 to 0.65. If you're doing heavier bondage type stuff, you should go from 0.55 to 0.65. That little extra thickness will make all the difference. And in fact, my black suit that I have that you see in a lot of these videos, that is 0.65 millimeters and it's held up to a lot of abuse. I really enjoy it. But the thicker you go, the more corseting it'll be and a lot more restrictive and harder to move around. So if you do get something that's a lot thicker, you really need to make sure the measurements are accurate to your size. So lastly, there is your heavy latex clothing. Now this is gonna be things like bondage suits and sleep sacks, which really aren't gonna stretch a lot and they're gonna hold up to a lot more abuse. So you're gonna to wanna to keep that in mind uh, when you go to those heavier gauges. Usually when you're picking out gear, a lot of places like for example, latex catfish will default at 0.4 millimeters. So if you do plan on uh, having a bit more bondage activities, it's good to pick one of those uh, greater latex thicknesses. It'll be a lot more durable. It will be a little bit more expensive. You'll pay a premium for those thicknesses, but in the long run, it'll last you a lot longer. So another thing that's important is figuring out the zipper placement, especially if you're going to be purchasing a cat suit. Now, I personally like front zips. They're the most utilitarian for me. They're really easy to put on by yourself. They have nipple access. And if you want something like putting in ice cubes or whatever like that, it's really easy. I personally like front zippers, but they will block the sheen of latex. A lot of people like that clean look. And if you have a zipper block in the front, you're not gonna get that. So a way to avoid that is getting a back zipper, which is still fairly easy to put on by yourself and a lot of people prefer that. My old latex catfish suit and my regulation suit both had back zippers. And then there's also shoulder zip suits, which is another way to get that clean look without having a zipper blocking both the front and the back. However, I've had difficulties with putting on shoulder zip suits by myself. So if you're going to be gearing up alone a lot, a shoulder zip suit may not be the best option because a lot of times you'll need a buddy to actually get to the zipper and put it on by yourself. Now, a last option is going completely zipperless and going with what's called a neck entry suit where you literally pull apart the neck and wiggle your way into the suit. And I personally am not a fan of those. Um, I always feel like I'm about to tear the suit in half whenever I'm pulling it apart. And it, especially if you have like some weight on you, you're not super slender, it's gonna be very difficult getting in and out of the shoulder um, entry or the um, neck entry suits. And I just personally am not a fan of them. So another thing with zippers that's really overlooked is the type of teeth. With this suit, this is an STR suit, the teeth are very little, and I found little teeth to actually be a pretty big point of failure with rubber gear. An example of this is with my kink engineering hood, which has really small teeth, and one of those two broke off and rendered the hood completely useless because the zipper pull fell off the tracks, and I was unable to put it back on, and I had to completely replace the zipper in order to get it to work. So one of the alternatives that I found is the really big plastic teeth. Uh, you find these types of zippers on coats a lot, but I know that Regulation and Full Kit both use these big plastic teeth, and I personally haven't had any failures with them. They seem to take a lot more abuse, and they don't run into that problem with the smaller ones with bending and falling off. So if you do know that you're gonna be putting a lot of stress on your zippers, it may be wise to invest in one of those bigger teeth zippers instead of the smaller ones. Next, there's the option for chlorination. Now, a lot of websites, for example, Latex Catfish, will give you the option to chlorinate a suit with an added fee. Now, what this means is you'll be able to get in and out of your rubber gear without having to use talcum powder or silicone lube. And that could be a big convenience for some people. It will make repairs a little bit harder and some things like smell and noise will be reduced, 
but it is a pretty nice trade-off for convenience. So that is something to keep in mind if you don't want to have to lube up or talc up a lot in order to get into your gear. And frankly, it's up to user preference whether or not they want to use chlorination, but it definitely is worth the convenience for the price. Now lastly, there's accessories that you have to think about. Now specifically with cat suits, a lot of people think it's a hot idea to get attached hood, attached glove, and attached feet. But I'll tell you right now, in practice, it really doesn't work out that well. Um, after an hour of wearing your gear, you're gonna be sweating a lot and your socks are really gonna fill up with sweat. And if you have attached socks, it's gonna be unable to take off the socks and drain out the sweat. You're gonna have to take off the whole suit just to drain out your socks and then it's kind of a pain to put everything back on. Same with if you need to use your phone or if maybe there's a toy or something that you can't use with gloves, you can't take off the gloves to use that. It's you know, um, and then lastly, with the hood, if you saw in one of my other videos, there was an issue with the attached hood where the hood was too small and it rendered the entire suit useless just because the hood was wrong. So I recommend keeping it modular. It gives you more options and there's less points of failure than if you were to get everything attached. Now with thicknesses, I usually like to go around 0.4 for the hoods, although some of my hoods, like my black style pup hood, are 1.2 millimeters. So really Really, it's down to user preference, but most of these regular gimpy type hoods are going to be 0.4. Gloves range anywhere from 0.3 to 0.6. And then socks, I like to get them as thick, as thick as possible, so I usually go with something that's like 0 0.6, 0 0.65 millimeters because you're going to be putting a lot of pressure on them when you step on them. So with that, I should be covering some of the things that you should look for when purchasing rubber gear, specifically cat suits. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about some of the places that I have purchased rubber gear from and just my general experiences with them and if I would recommend them or not, and if so, what I recommend. Anyways, if you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments. I love to get uh, suggestions for future videos, and I'm here to answer any questions that you may have. In the meantime, peace out.